Okay. Yeah, he said it's, it's something you just came up and running. All right, hang on just a second. Okay. I hit the wrong button. I have to put it all over again. That's okay. That's okay. There it is. All right. All right, I got you. We're playing your promo now. Going. All right. All right. So just tell me when. Up. You know how to do it. Just tell me when and I'll hang it up. Okay, we can hang up now. Okay. Get ready. Yep. All right. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, some of you can see me uh, live on Facebook. Uh, they're still getting ready at the radio station. So we're going to give them a couple of seconds to catch up uh, from the radio station. In the meantime, I want to tell Dr. Van Buren, my, my spiritual mother, good morning. Uh, mother Lily Mack, good morning. The Queen Elder, good morning. And my daughter Ebony, good morning. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, radio station should be caught up right about now. Good morning, my sister Karen. So this is what we're going to do. We want to thank you and welcome you for allowing us, Allen Impact Ministry, to be a part of your day. Uh, there are other things you could have been doing, including sleeping in. But we want to make sure that you know that we don't take this for granted. Amen. Uh, I have a great message I want to share with you. Uh, it actually turned into a two-part message. Yeah, uh, enti simply entitled Words, okay? Words. Uh, and it, it hashtag sticks and stones, uh, hashtags value and worth. Uh, remember that back in the day, uh, I don't know about this new generation, but when we were kids, uh, we would say sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me, right? Uh, and we found out that's not true. <laughs> if names can hurt, uh, but names are the result of using words, right? Amen. So we're going to get into uh, words. Uh, got quite a few scriptures. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 8, verse 3. Uh, Matthew 4 and 4. Uh, Psalms 19 and 14. 19 verse uh, 19 chapter verse 14 and Matthew 12 verses 36 and 37 we're going to again uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 8 verse 3 Matthew 4 verse 4 and Psalms 19 verse 14 Matthew 12 verses 36 and 37 uh, we want to again thank everyone for tuning in whether you're getting it in through uh, WCVG uh, you're getting it in through streaming Facebook and after uh, this, it will be uploaded to YouTube, so you can always get back and get this message. Amen. Again, it's going to be a two-part message. Uh, again, for our people who are listening via the radio, uh, if uh, I go over, which we have a tendency to do so, you can get it and get the message in its entirety on YouTube, Allen Impact Ministries. We are on YouTube, or you can get it on uh, Allen Impact Ministries Facebook page. Amen. All right. With that being said. Uh, we talk about words, right? Uh, the, def the, 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 the definition of a word according to life, I mean the uh, dictionary, it said it, it is a unit of language. A word is a unit of language. Right? Uh, it, it's something that we use to communicate. Isn't it ironic? So the question is, what do you use your words for? It's a unit that can be measured in, in language to communicate. So what do you use your words for? Well, let, let me help you out. Uh, nations have gone to war because of words. How many times have arguments escalated because of words and turned into insults, assaults, that, that will end up being fatal because of words? So what do we use our words for? Amen? Amen. Some people choose to use their words to deceive, uh, to supply misinformation, disinformation. Uh, some people use their words to encourage and uplift. But the Bible tells us, and if we go to Matthew 4 and 4, if you go there with me real quick, it says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. It is written. Jesus telling them, go to the scriptures. You'll see it in there. 
that man should not live by bread alone. And the scriptures he was talking about is the book that we refer to as Deuteronomy 8 and 3. Okay? Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. There's something that's more important that goes into your belly that you, that you need to live by. This is where he's telling them that my word is life and life is in my word. Right? So if you go in Deuteronomy 8 and 3, uh, you'll find out when they were in the uh, they were on their way to the promised land, they had nothing to eat. So the Lord caused manna to come down from the sky. And he's letting them know, look, this manna, it'll go into your belly, but you're going to get hungry again. But I got something that supersedes the manna. I have something that supersedes what the tempter was trying to get me to do. Jesus had been in the desert for 40 days. No water, no food. And the first thing the tempter, Satan, told him, turn these stones into bread. And the minute, you know, Jesus said that he was telling him there's something more important than bread that fills my stomach. I need what fills my soul. I need what's going to feed my mind and fill my soul. I need that bread. It supersedes my physical need. My spiritual need supersedes my physical need. That's what Jesus was trying to tell him. And that's the message we need to convey to us. So when you say my word, what am I doing with my words? If you understand that there's life in the word and, and the word is life, <clears throat> then there has to be an understanding that what I speak, she had, when she watched this, it should edify someone's spirit. It should encourage someone, lift someone because of the word. It, it, it's life. Right? Well, let's try it this way. The Bible tells us that life, well, the power of death and life is in the tongue. Right? So that's why I asked the question, what do you use your words for? Huh? What do you use your words for? Hmm. And he told us, the only way for man to live, for man to have his best life, that's what the young people say, that, right? I'm living my best life. Your best life is the word that, it, that represents Jesus Christ. Your best life is the word that comes from the spirit, that spirit being Jesus Christ. That's your best life. Why? Because there's life in the word because the word is life. Amen? Oh, my, for me, this is good. This is good. Uh, let's, let's look at that. I, I put hashtag power and value, right? Uh, the dictionary says power, uh, ability to do or act, the, the capability of doing or accomplishing something, right? Let's look at this. Uh, in Genesis, it says, let there be light. That's what the word was. That, those are the words that were spoken, right? Let there be light. So there was a power in the word. And it had the ability to cause what? Light. Mm. It had the ability to accomplish something. And what did it accomplish? It got rid of the darkness because the light shone and got rid of the darkness. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I put value. Value. Uh, value. What, what, is the, what is the value of a word? What is the value of a word? The value of a word is connected to worth. See, some folks, they, they, they grasp on to other folks' words, and every word that they say, they're hanging on it, and, and they consider those words valuable, right? But if it's not the correct words that, that contain life, if, if it's not the correct words that, that contain truth, if it's not the correct words that uh, contain love, then what's speaking is not that that, not that, that edifies the soul. Case in point, uh, this is not about politics, but to give you a great example, this nation has undergone such great infighting, hasn't it? On one side you have truth, and on one side you have lies. Words to make up truth, words to make up lies. The election was stolen, the election was stolen, the election was stolen. His own people have conducted investigation after investigation after investigation and found what? No fraud, no rigging, no, no, there was no stealing. But I'm going to keep saying it. And because he keeps speaking what is false, what is not true, he used his words to do what? That's the power. See, the tempter came to tempt Jesus with words, but Jesus would not be tempted. And, and I'm trying to get you somewhere. Uh, you have to understand that there is power in words. And, and folks consider words valuable when they become influenced by them. Become, it, it means something to them. So he said, how can folks be connected to a lie? Because they see value in it. 
Mm. They no longer see value in the truth. Okay, okay. So, so now, here's the thing. Word is a unit of language, right? So we use a whole lot of words to, to say something, right? We used to define a sentence as a complete thought. So it took words uh, to, to provide a, a complete thought to get across a point, right? To get across an idea. Uh, sometimes to persuade, to lead, to do whatever, right? So when we go to the next scripture, uh, Psalms 19 and 14, this is good. Psalms 19 and 14. The Bible says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let, 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 me, let me say this again. Let the words, all these units of measurement, all these units of measurements that come out of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, the words that I did not speak, the words that I'm thinking about, be acceptable in your sight, Lord. Hmm. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God contains life. So the writer here says, let the words that I speak be acceptable in your sight. The words that you speak, how can they be acceptable? How, how could they uh, become acceptable in Jesus' sight? And the thoughts that you think, how could they become acceptable in the sight of Jesus? Except they contain what the Lord has spoken. And you watch this, and, 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 and you're doing uh, what the Word is saying. So that the words that you speak back, the words that come out of you, if you want to be acceptable, they have to contain some things, and they have to be absent of some things. The words that they should, that what, what should be contained in those words is love, compassion, right? Empathy, uh, sympathy, uh, you know, understanding. All these things have to be contained in your speech. And it should come from what you think, what's in your heart. Let's go back a little again. In John 3, 16, right? We say, when we say you have to confess with your mouth, but believe in your heart. Right? So a lot of folks say, I love you, Lord, but it was in their heart. And it goes by what they show. Your words carry an action. It comes from love. When the, when the Bible says that the Lord will supply your every need according to what? His riches and glory. So that, when we go back to Deuteronomy 8 and 3, when we go back to Matthew 4, the word there is rhema. R-E-M-A. Rhema. He said, I'm going to supply, I'm going to take care of you. I made manna fall. That was rhema. That means I, I took care of you. I, I provided. Uh, and Matthew said, look, man should not live by bread alone. There's something greater than my physical need. There's something called a spiritual need. And we said before that you are a spirit that just wrapped in flesh. Yes, the flesh has to be taken care of, but it has to, the spirit has to be taken care of first. If you take care of the spirit, watch this. If you take care of the spirit, then you'll never be hungry. How do you never be hungry? But always doing what the word of God says. And you start speaking back and thinking on the things that the word of God says. That makes sense? Hmm. So when it comes to what, what am I using my words for? I'm using my words to help somebody else to get to where I am. Well, where are you? I'm in Christ. The words that we speak should help someone see Christ. The words that we speak should help someone to understand Christ. The words that we speak should, 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 should uh, show the love of Christ. The words that we speak should show the peace of Christ. The words. The words. So when we go to him and say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Well, guess what? If it contains you, if your words and your speech contains these things, then it, they're acceptable. They are acceptable. Amen? See, sometimes, watch this, sometimes what we say, what they said, what she said, what he said, they didn't line up, they didn't line up uh, with their thoughts or their feelings. And so that changes the intent. Some folks just say things. Right? They, they just have to say something. No matter what it is. They don't give a thought. But the Bible tells us to be what? Slow to speak. Be slow to speak. Or we just pop off. 
You know, I ain't gonna hold back nothing. I ain't holding my hand. There. You know me. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something. What okay? Is it the, are the words that you say? What do they contain? The words that you're saying. Do they represent Christ? The words that you say, is it going to help your brother, your sister? The words that you say, is it going, the Bible uses this word, edification. Is it going to bring edification? Slow down. I need you to think about that. That's what this is. Be a wise person, a person who has wisdom, don't always respond to everything. And when they respond, they don't respond so quickly. They respond slowly. Why? It's important to them the words that come out of their mouth. Because their words mean something. Their words have value. Their words have, you know, have to provide uh, worth and value and a strength and a power. That's important to them, but it's not important to everybody. But it's important to that believer. Because they understand, the Bible says, you shall give uh, an account for every idle word that you speak. You don't believe me, do you? <laughs> you should give an account for every, You're going to be judged by what you say and what you don't say You're going to be judged by what you do and what you don't do Let's go to uh, Matthew 12, 36 and 37 Matthew 12, 36 and 37 The Bible says But I say unto you That every idle word that men shall speak they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. That's verse 36. Verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Hmm. To me, this is just me now, enough people do not understand those two verses right there. Every word that you speak, every word that I speak, there's a record. There's a record that's being kept in heaven. Every lie, every truth, every uh, word that was meant to mislead, every word that was uh, meant to uh, that they gave disinformation, every word, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, every word we have to give an account for. We will be judged by. So if you understand, that's what I say. Your words have power. Your words have value. They have the watch it. They have the power to condemn. They have the power to save. Do we understand that? To me, that's very powerful. If we knew, if well, let's put it this way: if we understood that we were going to have to give an account for every word, would that change the way that we speak? Would that change the way that we speak? The way we talk to one another? Would that change? If you really believe that. Either your words are going to uh, ju be justified and, 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 and you, know, you get to come with Christ or your words are going to condemn you and you're going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of the name. Depart from me because your speech is foul. And watch this, your speech is foul because of what's in your heart. Hmm. So if watch this. So the only way you can live is by the word that comes out of the mouth of God. That word that comes from God. That word that comes through the Bible. Uh, we have to understand. We have to take it in. So it can do a transformation. Transformation. It can do a change within us. Why? Because we say. I don't care who you are. If you said some things, you know you shouldn't have said. I raise my hand. And you didn't do it just once or twice. But the Bible says is when I was a child, I thought as a child. But then it came a point when I put, I put away childish thinking. I became a man. In other words, I matured. But when you listen to a lot of folks today, they have not matured. Because they're still saying the same old thing. And one of the excuses, they said, well, God is still working on me. He's still working on me. He should be working through you by now. <laughs> right? He should be working through you by now. Not you saying he working on me when there's been no change, there's been no growth. So you're not living by the word that comes out of God's mouth. You're living by what you want to live by, not the word. So if you're living by the word, then you'd understand that I have to change. Why? Because I have to give an account. I'm going to be held accountable. I'm going to be judged. Mm. And if you go, go up one more verse, uh, verse 35. 
It says a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bring forth good things. Stop right there. If God is in me, if God is in me, then I can't speak what I used to speak. I can't speak corrupt things. I can't speak lies. I can't speak deceit. I can't speak hurtful things, harmful. I can't speak that. Why? Because if, uh, if, uh, if I'm good, what's in me has to come out of me. Uh, but uh, here it says that an evil man out of the evil treasure bringing forth evil things. If I'm still going to be evil, if I'm still going to be corrupt, then that's what you're going to hear. And watch this. Not only that, that's what I'm going to do. Hmm. You judging me. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. It says that a tree should be known by the fruit. Now, do you have poisonous fruit? Or do you have good and juicy sweet fruit? You get to decide that. Because the Lord, our God, Jesus Christ, loves us so much, he gave us free will. He gave us free will. He said, you can choose me. Well, not choose me. But for those who choose me, watch this, you shall live by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Those who don't choose me, you shall die by the very words that you speak. How powerful is that? See, if you judge me. I'm not judging anybody. I'm giving you scripture. Jesus Christ is going to judge. Your actions, your words, they judge you. Your actions and your words, they judge you. Huh? So if you got a problem with you know still cussing folk out and you say you saved, uh, <laughs> mm, well, the Lord's still working me. Okay, but you said that five years ago, ten years ago, twenty years ago, you still cussing folk off, uh, cussing folk out, right? Why? Well, you know, I, I, well, this 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 lying thing. Why? Why? You were made. I was made. We were all made from the one known as the truth. So there's something in you that has to go back, get out of you, that has to be denounced, that has to be purged so you can get back to your original, your original spirit, which is a true spirit. So there has some words that you have to speak to get rid of those words that are in you. Ooh-wee. Hmm. What are you saying? Uh, when we go back to uh, Psalms 19 and 14, the word uh, is Amar, which means to declare. So we say, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. There are going to be some words I speak out that's going to be uh, declaring, right? Declarative. If, if I declare things, the, uh, the things I declare have to be acceptable, have to be in alignment with the word of God. If I want to be in the word of God, not to change what's in my heart. And if I change what's in my heart, it's going to change the way that I think. And if I change the way that I think, it's going to change my speech. And it makes it acceptable. So therefore, I don't have to be worried about condemning. And watch this. What I decree and what I declare, what you decree, what you declare, will be acceptable. And you'll see change in your life. That's what you got to decree it. You got to declare it. Yes. Yes. But are you decreeing and declaring what's really in your heart? And what's acceptable in the world, uh, to God? Are you? This, this is good stuff. Uh, I want to I want to squeeze in one more. I got a few more minutes. I want to squeeze in one more. Can I do that? Uh, let's go to Colossians chapter three. I didn't get that to you in the beginning because I didn't think I was going to get to it. But Colossians uh, three, verse sixteen. Colossians three, verse sixteen. The Bible says this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all things, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father by him. Let's go back up to 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly, live in you. Let the word of God live in you, right? In wisdom, richly in wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. In other words, when I hear something good that comes from the Lord, I, my job is to share it with you. That's why I do what I do, right? And watch this. Then we ought to, we ought to uh, go to the Psalms. The Psalms is talking about prayers. The Psalms is talking about songs. And then there are hymns that are different than songs. 
than spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart. So if we if we really had understanding of the word, I wouldn't have time to try, be trying to cuss you out. If we really understood what this said, I'm always, you always put, we also should be encouraging and pushing one another to be come our best. Right? That's how we get our best life. If I'm always encouraging you and pushing you to be your best, that says something about me, right? And if you're always encouraging someone to be their best, that says something about you. And guess what? Those things say something to Jesus Christ. So, therefore, I don't have time. We don't have time to lie. We don't have time to mislead and deceive. We don't have time for, for you know, a war of words. We only have, we, we sh our mouth should be filled with praises. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my, oh, that's how that fit in. That's how that fits in. See, we have folks, I, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. But I got time for gossip. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. But I got time for gossip. Yeah, my mouth, my mouth, my mouth. But my mouth can only speak what's in my heart. What's in my heart comes out through my mouth and through my actions. But the Bible tells me here in Colossians 16 and 17 about the songs that we're supposed to sing and sing with one another. And the 17 tells me about the, the, the deeds I'm supposed to do in the name of the Lord. The work that we're supposed to do in the name of the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, especially parents, grandparents, you got to say some words to discipline your children. That's different. You're dis disciplining them from a point of love, a place of love. Sometimes you're, 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 the husband and wife have to have some conversations that sometimes may get a little heated. But it's coming from a place of love. So there'll be understanding, there'll be, uh, there'll be correction. Not tearing down. Not degrading, not devaluing. Right? Because why? You should say this to yourself. I am too valuable to speak those things that are not valuable. I, you know, the Lord put, paid a price for me. So I can't speak those things. Watch this. They have no worth and no value. That, oh, my God. Is, is that a good mindset to be right there? Is that a, good, is that a great mindset? Hmm? Is that a great mindset to be right there? Huh? Because why? I'm not talking about uh, cockiness or pretentious or arrogance. I'm talking about there was a price paid for you. Somebody laid down their life for you. Why get up and speak some junk that has no value? Why get up and say something that's going to hurt, that's going to harm, that can lead to death? When God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and I'm giving you an opportunity to speak so, to do so, to live so, through my word. Hmm. I don't know, that, that was just a thought that I had, and I wanted to share that. So, he said, why didn't you say that? Because I'm too valuable. Oh, my God. Why you say that? Because... There was a price paid for me, so why, why should I speak something that, that, that does not show value, that it has no worth? Hmm? If I really understand that. See, I, I, we get all these words, but how are we using our words and what do they really mean? I have all these words. I got a couple of minutes. I, I'm going to show you something. And this is uh, a well-known preacher, I'm not going to say his name, has a huge platform, uh, was preaching. I was somebody sent me just to listen to, and I listened to it, and it was going good till he got to the point where uh, he was preaching about the temple beautiful, and he said that uh, talked about the the man who was begging outside the temple beautiful, and he got to the point where he said that Jesus had to pass that man every day, sometime twice a day, and didn't heal him, and the crowd was going crazy. He said, "Oh y'all," he said, "I'm preaching now." He said, "But, but." And he, I, I, he lost me right there because there's nowhere in the Bible that's, that, that you can extrapolate or, or say that. And, and you can back it up with Scripture. There's nowhere, nowhere, nowhere in the Bible. You, and, I, and I told a friend of mine that sent me, he said, well, man, it's reasonable to think. I said, no. I said, go show me in the Bible where it says Jesus had an encounter with that man or passed by that man. I said, it's not in there. I said, so us, we have to go by what's here. What's in the Word? Man should not live by bread alone, by every word that precedes out of the mouth of God. And the Bible tells us that all scripture is good. It's inspired by the Holy Ghost. So if it's not in there, I can't say it. He said, do not add to my word. Do not take away from my word. 
So when I come to you, I'm giving you all that the Lord has given to me, and I'm giving you scriptures to, to show you so you can go back for yourself. So when they say, well, you used to do this, you used to, well, I found out in the Word. I can't say that. I found out in the Word I shouldn't do that. Huh? Wow. Wow. See, so your words have meaning. Your words have value. Your words have power if you stay connected to Jesus Christ. But once you disconnect, they still have power. They still have meaning, but they have no more value. Mm, my God, my God. They can lead someone to or lead someone from. They can influence someone to do better or influence someone to do under. People have been influenced and seduced by words that led them to death. And we must remember Matthew. He said, every word, every idle word that we ever speak, there's a, there's an account, there's a written record. <laughs> there's a written record. So be careful with your words. Be careful with your words. This was part one. And we're going to go deeper into part two. I hope you join me and you stay to, uh, you know, come back next week for that one. So this is, this is, I ran out, ran out of time. I probably ran a few minutes over. But listen, uh, thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be with you today. If this message blessed you, please feel free to share it. Also, if you want to soar into this ministry, feel free to do so. We never tell you uh, how much to give. We don't do that. We need that between you and the Lord. Amen. No gift is too small. No gift is too great. Well, how can you do that? Out in Impact Ministries, we are on Givelify. And if you want to do it through Cash Out, then it's Elder AE. Elder AE on Cash Out. So until the next time, we pray God's biggest, best, and boldest blessings upon you and yours. And Remember this, consider your words. The Bible tells us to be slow to speak. Consider your words. May God bless you and God keep you.